Excuse me. This is Gina Spignoli, Paul's widow. She's here to see her husband. My sympathies, Mr. Spignoli. Thank you. Things are a little hectic around here today. But Can I use your phone? He wants to file a $10 million wrongful death suit against you. Mrs. Scrignoli? Yes. Hi, I'm Detective Harry Garibald. On behalf of all of us here, I, I'd just like to express our deepest condolences. That's kind of you. I know that Paul wasn't always on the best of terms with the police, so it's gratifying to know he had a friend. Did you know that he, he talked about you all the time? He never mentioned you, but then he liked to keep his business affairs private. Mm. Why don't you let me get you a cup of coffee, and when they're finished downstairs, they'll let us know. Okay. Um, was his death painful? Oh, no. Very sudden, like that. He's still my heart. Who was that? The grieving widow. I've had it with widows. How does a girl like that wind up with a creep like Scrinio? <laughs> Maybe the man had certain qualities. Look at Garibaldi. Hey, what's the problem, lover? That guy is a total sleaze. Santa Claus on the sleigh, let's go. You got enough rope on this guy? I want every available body pulling on the end of these ropes. You suppose this is how they built the pyramids? Well, he sure was a huge guy. Poor Paul. He tried to eye us, but he had absolutely no willpower. You know, I'm wondering, I, I don't want you too personal, and you certainly don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Everybody all said this. What, Harry? Well, I, I'm kind of wondering how a woman like you got hooked up with a guy like that. Oh, he was just lonely, like everybody else. And he had a gentle way about him. He liked to take care of me, and I like that a lot. Everything secure up there? Right, Sarge. We're See, ready I was here. just 15 when we met, and when he first fought the question, honestly, I didn't know at first. I was very young, and my dad hated him. I said to myself, Gina, where are you going to find another man like this? A man so kind and so giving. A man with millions of dollars somewhere, which the government will never find. A man who's had two major heart operations. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh Lord, he's alive. Jimmy, uh, the fat pig has come back to life. I'm cursed. Uh, it's been nice talking to you. Step by, see you Am I blue? Looking for Al Piano. Follow me. Tears in my eyes telling you. Am I blue? You be too. If your plan Friends of Eddie's. John Miles is here's Neil Brandywine, Jimmy Baldini. Tell her to cut it. Sit down, gentlemen. Meters with four inch barrels, half a dozen Uzis. When, where, how much? Harry Garibaldi! Remember me? Gina Spagnoli, Paul's widow. Gina, you know this guy? Sure, he was one of the detectives who was so nice to me after Paul died the first time. Free! Don't be a fool! Hold there! Come on, Paul, Peter, come on out! Come, come on out! Hold him right there! Show him your permit, Mike. All right, go I on. Got a permit, I got a permit. All right, here, here, here. here. Easy. All right, come on, listen, you've got nothing here. You've got no arrest. I didn't say anything. Hey, we're not arresting you, Al. This is just the way that we always leave a classy joint like yours, right, fellas? Bye, Harry. That's it. Gina. Harry. Harry? Um, I'm sorry about what happened before. 
I guess it must have ruined something. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, it's good to see you again. It's good to see you too, Harry. So, uh, what were you doing there anyway? Oh, I'm Al's regular hostess, and I sing on Mondays. No kidding. Yeah, well, Paul, had, may he rest in peace, had a 12% quiet interest in the lounge. Oh, and you're looking out for him. Well, everything else Paul left me is tied up by the Justice Department. Cars, the houses, the bank accounts. Because they say it's all illegal proceeds from criminal activities. Well, that must be pretty rough. Yeah. All left me with so many expenses, I can't even pay off the casket I had custom built. Gina, you're still tight with a lot of Paul's people, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking, uh, may uh, don't get mad at me. Okay. Maybe you could help us with some information. You mean, be a snitch? More like an informant. An informant? Yeah, and in exchange, maybe we could help you with the feds and with Paul's estate. Do you really think you could do that, Harry? I think let's sit down, let's talk about it. That would be beautiful. Call me. Count on Gina. Bye, Harry. That's really good, solid police work, Get Harry. the dough. This is a judgment made by who? By me, as the field officer in charge. Gentlemen. Did you relay our request, Captain? We're still discussing it. Oh, boy. Discussing it? People, it's a two-way street. This girl's done nothing but deliver for you. Come D-Day, you ask her to wear a wire can only increase her risk. Okay. We like early release on a few dollars in her husband's estate. Ten thousand dollars. I mean, what's to discuss? Where's the reciprocity? FBI has no objection. Of course. It's not the FBI's money, is it? You know, you just work for the IRS, Mr. Simpson. Sometimes I think he had a personal hate vendetta against my late husband, Paul. Agent Simpson, could I talk to you for a minute? You can talk till the cows come home. That impound doesn't lift. Excuse us. I don't think Mrs. Strignoli's request is out of line. You're entitled to your opinion, Captain. Listen to me. I have a lot of people on a high-risk undercover because somebody in your office authorized dealing with tax liens in her husband's estate for an operation against Al Piano. And maybe you weren't consulted in that decision. Or maybe you disapproved of it. Why wouldn't I approve of it? You only made a joke out of the last 13 months of my life. Joke's been played on me a few times too, Mr. Simpson. But the deal was made. And a lot of hours in the lives of a lot of other people are going to be wasted if you contradicted an execution. And I think if I called right now, whichever of your superiors made the original deal would authorize releasing that money. Not necessary. Let's stay consistent in our stupidity. Mr. Simpson's reconsidered. We'll release the 10,000. Fit Mrs. Cornelli for a mic, would you? Yes, sir. And talk? Talk, talk. I wish you could be there, Harry. No, that wouldn't be smart, Gina. I mean, I know Al made you and Detectives LaRue in Washington. It was just a wish. Well, Lieutenant Goldblum will be looking out for you. And Officer Coffee. And Officer Coffee, right. Gee, that was so technical. Yeah, you barely feel it once it's on. How does it go? Pack straps underneath. Microphone hooks to your bra. Okay. I guess we better get me a bra then. 